everybody! In this video I'll be showing you how to bag out or fully line a sleeveless top. This top has an open back with a button closure, however the same process could be used with an open ended zipper through the back. As you can see, this garment is sewn with a machine in all areas. This seems like a simple thing to do, but we've all been at that point where you realise you can't turn it all through because the armhole is in the way. I will always avoid any non-decorative stitching, so if you're anything like me, you'll love this process. Firstly, you start by ironing all of your fabric. It's important to pre-treat your fabric however you will clean it when it's a garment. That's why it's also a good measure to wash it too. Because mine is for my wedding, I've only ironed it. But if you plan to wash your garment in the washing machine, it's likely the fabric will either run, dye, warp or almost definitely shrink if you don't pre-treat it. It's also a good idea if you're using a lot of fabric to clip where you press to. This means you don't have to press the whole thing because you know when you haven't done enough. You're then going to go ahead and pin all the pieces down and cut them out. As you can see, the fabric I'm using has a pattern woven into it, so it has a sheen in the background. If, like me, you're using a fabric that has a sheen, like a satin, then it's important to cut all the pieces facing the same way. I cut the back with the shoulder seam to the right, and so I will do the same with the back. If not, you'll end up with shadowing, which is when one piece reflects the sun darker than the other. I've now cut out two fronts and four backs, including the lining. You can also have fun with this by cutting out contrast lining. That makes a reversible top. You'll also need to cut out a bias strip and create a ruler loop. You can watch my video how to sew a ruler loop to follow. Like I say in my other video, it's important the ruler loop is on the bias so it can stretch. You will then go ahead and sew the darts in. It's better to do this before you sew any seams, despite the fact that I forgot to do them first and sewed the shoulder seams instead. Sorry about that one. Finish them by pressing the dart seams downwards. Then stitch right sides together through the shoulder seam on both sides. Repeat this for the lining as well, keeping it separate from the main. Then press the seam allowance towards the back. Then lay your lining and main right sides together. If you're using an open-ended zipper, this is when you'll pin it in place. Otherwise, begin pinning your pieces together, as well as placing the ruler loop in the upper centre back too. You're going to start by pinning and sewing from the centre back through the entire neckline and then back down the centre back on the other side. Then you're going to stitch each of the armholes. Make sure you don't sew anything else. You can see more clearly here where I've pinned all my pieces. After stitching, go ahead and clip the seam allowances wherever there's a bend in the stitching. This will stop the top stitching from puckering and also make a sharper edge. Make sure you clip as close as you can to the stitching line without clipping the stitching. This is where the process gets a little fiddly. You're going to take the back, through the shoulder seam and out the front. Start by splitting the fronts and reach into the shoulder seam. Then take the corner of the back with your other hand and reach it to the shoulder seam. Here is a diagram from the downloadable notes to make it clearer what to do. As you can see, it's a little fiddly, but once you've done it once, it's much easier. Switch hands and pull the back through to the front. Then repeat for the other side, creating cute little bunny ears. Flatten all the seams out so you can prepare to top stitch them. You're then going to go over all the seams you stitch and pin them flat. Do this by rolling the edge in your fingers until the seam is as flush as possible and then pin flat. Make sure you leave a gap at the end and the start of the seams, approximately an inch. After you've pinned all the edges, you're then going to top stitch over them. The distance away from the edge is up to you. I only had mine about 3mm from the edge, but you can also have fun with it and use contrast thread with a 1cm gap, it's totally up to you. After that's done, you're going to go ahead and sew the side seams together. You'll do this by opening up the front side seam and then doing the same with the matching back and stitching them together. Make sure you're still stitching right sides together, pinning starting from the underarm seam to make sure it matches evenly. Now that the side seams are done, it's time to close the hem. You'll start by taking the top layer of the front, flipping it over the entire garment, then matching it to the hem on the other side, right sides together. Then pin across the hem, making sure again that your seams match up neatly. You'll then unpin approximately 6 inches of hem so that you can turn through the garment. I suggest leaving this gap somewhere easily hidden, like where the side seam is. 
After stitching, turn through the garment and then top stitch over the seam like you did through the neck and armhole. To close the opening, you will just fold back the seam allowance and top stitch it closed, matching it to the top stitching through the rest of the hem. Then clip any loose threads and stitch on your button. Don't forget to visit my blog to download the free PDF notes which you can follow or keep for reference. They also come with clear images to match the steps. You can find the link below. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Comment below for any other tutorials you may want. Thanks for watching.